In today's gospel, we hear about the tax collector named Zacchaeus. He was a short little fellow, by the sounds of it, and the chief tax collector. So as the chief tax collector, he would not have been liked by too many people because of his crooked ways. Often, the tax collectors were quite wealthy because they would cheat people by overcharging and keeping the excess taxes that they collected. Theft, greed, Deceit. These were just some of the sins that tax collectors would commit regularly in their work. But even the most crooked, the most sinful people can be completely restored in the presence of Jesus Christ. Even the worst sinners have the opportunity to turn back from their past ways and experience God's mercy, His forgiveness, and healing when in the presence of the Son of God. They receive this if they choose to repent, to confess their sins, and to make amends for whatever wrongs that they have done. In today's gospel, we see this happen with Zacchaeus, this man that everyone else probably had written off. And if asked their opinion of what would happen to Zacchaeus, I'm sure many people in the town would have said he's going straight to hell. As Jesus passed through Jericho, though, Zacchaeus made every effort to see him. We hear how he went and climbed the sycamore tree to get a better view as Jesus passed by. Sure enough, Jesus sees him up in the tree. He sees his efforts to try and experience an encounter with Jesus. So Jesus tells Zacchaeus to come down. Come down. Not only does he say come down, he says, I'm coming to your house today. I want to stay with you. Imagine that kind of a shock for Zacchaeus, or for any of us if that was the experience. On one hand, Zacchaeus couldn't say no now. Jesus was a prominent figure with a large following. On the other hand, Zacchaeus had no time to prepare his home for this self-invited guests. Jesus would undoubtedly see Zacchaeus' house for what it was, au natural. Zacchaeus would have no time to clean up any mess, no time to pick up things lying around, no time to hide things that he didn't want his guests to see. Often we do these things when visiting people come over, family or friends. Jesus would see Zacchaeus' house as it was. Think about it. If, if I were to say that Father Valdemar and I are coming to your house right after this Mass, I'm sure some people would get quite nervous. Catch you off guard. No time to pick up clothes or toys or things like that and hide things you don't want Father to see in the house. We would see the place as is. Isn't it true, though, that our home is very representative of who we are? We have this particular style in how we decorate the furniture, the way things are organized, the order or chaos of our possessions, the photos that we post on the walls, the memorabilia of maybe trips or experiences, that we've had in life. It's very personal. When you invite someone into your home, you are inviting someone into your heart. When you invite someone into your home, you are inviting them into your heart. Often, when we invite someone over for dinner, especially if they're a stranger or not too close to us, maybe a boss coming over from work, or maybe a group of people that we're not so close to, but at Christmas or Thanksgiving or birthday party, We want time to prepare. We need advance notice. Without this preparation or notice, we can experience great vulnerability before our guests. You may even feel judged as they walk into the home and look around at the house, at what's there, how things are organized. They look at the possessions, the photos, maybe even make some comments of what they see. So when Jesus entered Zacchaeus' home, Zacchaeus experienced that same vulnerability, that same discomfort when Jesus looked around and saw his luxurious lifestyle, his great wealth. Knowing that all these possessions of his wealth came from cheating people, inflating their taxes, Zacchaeus immediately felt great shame, great guilt, and he repented. Jesus doesn't even need to say a word. And Zacchaeus says, see all these things, Lord? I'm going to give half of them to the poor, right off the bat. Anyone I've defrauded to get these things, I'll pay them four times what I stole. 
Zacchaeus is deeply moved to make the right, make right the countless wrongs that he had done in his past. What an amazing conversion story. That's the power of Jesus Christ when he enters into our homes, when he enters into our heart, until he enters into our very being. There is a great conversion. When we invite Jesus into our hearts, into our lives, any past sins beg to be cleansed. Because sin cannot exist when Jesus is present. It's like going to this fancy party where everyone's in these beautiful suits, these fancy dresses and fine clothing, wonderful shoes. And we walk in and we're in sort of beach wear, shorts and a t-shirt and flops. And right away you realize, whoa, I'm out of place. That's what sin feels like when Jesus enters into our lives. Immediately we recognize something needs to change. So too it is with Christ. When we come to Mass, when we receive Jesus Christ both in the Word here and in the sacrament at the altar, the same thing happens. Sin must flee. Something needs to change. And we need to decide as we receive the Lord, as we're walking out the doors at the end of Mass, what will I choose? Will I continue to have Jesus in my home, in my heart? Or will I flee, cling on to my sin or my past ways? If we decide that Jesus is the one to stay out of those two visitors, then something has to happen with those past sins. That's why we go to confession to make things right with God again, to make our homes clean, pure, and welcoming to Jesus. Otherwise, we cling back onto sin and kick Jesus the visitor out. And sometimes that means we stop practicing our faith, we stop going to church, because the two cannot coexist. In today's gospel, we hear how Zacchaeus, when faced with this decision, Jesus enters into his home and he looks around at his sinful tendencies and patterns, all the things that he has accumulated by cheating. He decides, I've got to get rid of that. I will give it all back to the people I stole from. In fact, I have such remorse that those people will get four times what I cheated them. Upon hearing Zacchaeus' repentance and his plans to repair the wrongs that he has done in his life, Jesus restores Zacchaeus' dignity, forgiving him of his sins, saying, Today salvation has come to this house. Today, salvation has come to this heart. Today, salvation has come to this man. My friends, that's exactly what happens when we come to the sacrament of confession. We choose to welcome Jesus into our home and to our hearts. In doing so, we reject our past sins, renounce sinful patterns in our life. In confession, we are telling Jesus, like Zacchaeus did, that we will give away anything that has led us to sin in the past. And now we want to make things right going forward. You and I never know when our time or hour will come at the end of our lives. When our time on this earth is over, we don't know. We never know. It could be today. It could be 20 years from now. This is why we always need to be ready. We always need to be prepared. Always pure in heart. Always free from sin. Because one day Jesus will walk up to us like he did to Zacchaeus and call us out from the tree of our lives. In that moment, we want the home of our soul to be clean and in order so that without hesitation, without hesitation, Jesus may say to us, like he did to Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to this house.